Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. Up to now, we've only looked at binding to styles using the binding expression with the curly braces, static resource, and then some style name. All right. And we said earlier that this type of binding, the static resource binding, only happens once when the app first starts. That's why it's a static resource. It won't change throughout the life of the app. However, there are other examples of binding statements that are not static. For example, there's a theme resource, which is similar to the static resource, but the resource lookup is evaluated when the theme changes. So what's a theme, you might wonder? Well, a theme is a collection of colors that are selected by the end user at an operating system level. So in the Windows 10 desktop, you can pop open the settings app, go to personalization, and here you can choose a background color and I think a also an accent color. All right, and so in this case, I've got black as my background and then this blue accent color. All right. You can also personalize the phone and the Xbox One as well by choosing a background and an accent. Now, admittedly, uh, each have a different set of options, but in general, the end user can personalize their colors in all the Windows 10 flavors. All right. So, as a developer, you can choose to utilize this these color selections in your app so that your app honors the user's choices. Now, you're not required to do this, but you probably should unless you have a particular branding goal in mind. So there are a set of colors that allow you, or rather a set of styles that allow you to utilize those colors that were selected by the user. And getting to that resource dictionary where those styles are defined, that's a little bit tricky, and that'll be the topic of this lesson. Now, if you take a look, let's shut that down and open up our main page.xaml in a new project that I'm calling Theme Resources. And uh, if you take a look at the grid here uh, as you create a brand new blank app template app, uh, you'll see that the grid utilizes a theme resource called uh, application page background theme brush. All right. Now, if you put your mouse cursor just anywhere in that word, application page background theme brush, and then you hit the F12 key on your keyboard, it'll open up this file in the preview called generic.xaml. And if you hover your mouse cursor over it, and unfortunately, well, let me just double click it. Can I do that? There we go. If I hover my mouse cursor over, you can see the full path of that file on my, on my, uh, a copy of Windows here. It's program files x86, Windows Kits 10, design time, common configuration, neutral, UAP, version number, generic, generic.xaml. Okay. And you can see here that it's defined a solid color brush with that key that we've uh, that's automatically being used in our grid and it sets it to this color which is white with all F's all right now in this lesson I'm primarily going to be talking about or referring to colors defined as theme resources however there are many different types of styles that are defined in this generic .xaml file uh, including font faces and weights and sizes and thicknesses uh, and it, there are even um, uh, it defines default styles, behavior, and layout for all the base XAML controls. So if you ever wonder why something is styled a certain way or why it behaves in a certain way, this generic.xaml file is where you can look, and you can use that technique that I used just a moment ago to get it. But uh, you can see it's a very long file. Uh, looks like it's 14,000 lines of code, all right? And you just would have to stare at it for days on end to really figure out all that it's doing. Uh, but at any rate, the way that you utilize those, uh, those styles is to reference them inside of your own styles. Uh, and so here, let's just create a little resource dictionary here for the page. So page.resources. And inside of here, I might want to create a solid color brush that I call accent brush. And then I would set the color equal to that um, theme resource called system accent color. Right. 
All right, so that system accent color will give me access uh, to the accent colors that the user selects. So let me uh, just add, for example, a rectangle here. And I'll set the, the width at 100 and the height at 100. And I'm going to set the, um, the fill equal to that um, system, or rather that static resource that I called Accent Brush. All right. Let's take a look at our designer here and you can see that it shows that same blue color that you see in the tab of Visual Studio because Visual Studio is using that for the select that blue color for the selected tab and also for the uh, the bar down the bottom and other uh, places here as well alright so you can see how I defined a static resource using a theme resource but I could just go straight to the theme resource as well so let me just copy this out here and um, use this instead like so and nothing changes all right so that's how I get at the accent color what how about the the color of the windows in general here uh, to get that color let me just copy this down and then make this 50 and 50 if we want to get this light color uh, we would use system color window color like so and so that's going to give us a light colored um, area inside of the blue box all right and so again that matches that that light color and the rest of the window we're going to see how that plays out here in just a moment uh, when we play with the with the preferred theme but let's come back to that in just a moment uh, if you want an entire list of all of these um, these themes take a look at this XAML theme resource here let me just put the where you can find this at bitdo slash theme resources you can come to this web page and it has just this long list of uh, of the different theme brushes colors for buttons and text and all sorts of stuff you might want to spend some time on this page to learn more about that. So on the Windows Phone you get to do something a little bit different. Let's uh, go to the emulator here and run it real quick. On the Windows uh, 10 Phone the user can select both a theme and an accent color um, just like whenever you're building uh, for the Windows 10 desktop, you, the developer, get to decide whether to use those colors or not. Now, on the phone, the user can select a dark theme or a light theme. And um, you can see here in this particular case that I've chosen the dark theme. How do I know that? Because this system window color is not white on the phone, it's actually black. Let's take a look in the settings here if I can get to that on the simulator. Let's go down to settings. Yeah, there we go. We go to personalization, uh, colors, and you can see you can choose your mode either light or dark. So now I'm going to change from dark to light and I'm going to go back to my app, go all the way down here, and take a look at the theme resources app again and notice that that system color changed from black to white. So the intent of that light and dark theme was really to change the shell, the colors that are used by the operating system. But again, as the developer, you can choose to actually utilize those colors um, and each control the buttons the text boxes everything are already themed for both light and dark and by default uh, the uh, I think the dark will be used however as a developer you can change or choose your preferred theme by setting it in the app.xaml right, so I'm going to go here app.xaml and you can see by default the requested theme is light but what if I change that to dark let's run the application again Okay, and now you can see that the background color for the window is black, even though that I chose the, um, the color 
even though I chose the uh, the light theme for the application. And this works kind of the same way inside of our um, desktop apps as well. Now that I've changed the requested theme to dark, let's take a look at this again on my local machine. You recall last time we ran the app, it had a white um, background, but now we're running with a with a black background. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to show you how to override uh, the styles that are defined in this generic .xaml, uh, but you can read about it in that page that I pointed to you just a moment ago here, that XAML theme resources page. It'll tell you about how to do that. All right, finally, a moment ago, I said that you could request a theme, uh, and I wanted to emphasize the fact that it's merely a request, and even the property says requested theme. Uh, so if the user is using one of the high contrast themes on the desktop. It's going to override the requested theme as well as any styles that you create for your control. So high contrast themes are for accessibility for people that are vision impaired and that takes precedence over any aesthetic that you might want to use for your app. So um, here's what I'm going to do is go again to settings. Let me choose, let me see if I can get to high contrast. Yeah, high contrast settings and um, it's under ease of access choose high contrast and I'm going to choose high contrast theme number one and then select apply all right and I don't know how much of that you saw but the uh, the the system kind of does a quick reboot and now you can see that um, the settings app looks completely different Visual Studio looks different when we run our app this time um, we get the theme colors uh, primarily for uh, instead of any colors that we define in our app okay now like I said earlier theme resources should be leveraged to keep your app looking like they belong on the user's desktop or device they sh so you should always resist the urge to use custom colors or fonts uh, and things of that nature unless you have a really good reason to do so and, and one of the good reasons would be for branding purposes for your company like think about Netflix how they have that iconic red color with the white text in that specific font all right um, furthermore there are built-in styles that are available to your app so for example if I go back to this main page.xaml and I took a look and this is kinda hard to look at so I'm gonna go back here and change out of uh, high contrast settings and select none ah much better there we go. Let me change this to a stack panel real quick here. And then I'm going to add a, um, a text block. And I'll set the text equal to my app title, something like that. And I'm going to set the style equals, we'll get to that point right there. Okay. And so I can take advantage of some of the default styling built into, um, uh, to, that generic .xaml page, like for example, here let's just use um, static resource header text block style, and so you can see. And let's just blow this up to like 66%. We have this very specific font. I think it's one of the Segoe fonts, but it's very thin and light and uh, you'll see that particular font used often in applications all right so we can borrow from that as well so if you ever are wondering where you can actually find some of these um, some of these styles for example for the text block let me go over here to the properties window on the right hand side and i'm going to go to i'm going to go to uh, miscellaneous and then you can see that uh, right now under style i get this uh, windows.ui.xaml.style. If I click this little green uh, button, you can see that I can choose from a system resource. Here, let me move this over a little bit so you can see it better. I choose from the, uh, one of the system resources. In this case, I've chosen the header block style, but we could also choose, for example, the sub header style. Uh, or a, um, a 
caption, okay, much smaller font. There's one last thing that I want to sh point out here, and that is if we were to put our mouse cursor on the caption text block style and then hit F12, you'll notice that it brings us to like line 12,400 in the generic.xaml file. And if you scroll over to the right, you'll see that this style has a based on attribute. And so uh, this style builds on something called base text block style. Uh, and then it adds a couple of modifications to it. And so this is where you'll see that it's a lot like cascading style sheets where you are, you take a style and you keep modifying it and adding additional changes to it. Now if we wanted to look at this base text block style, I'll just hit F12 again. Oh, can't navigate to def the definition. Let's just go ahead and control copy that uh, and look through it to find it. All right, and so we can see it defined here as the base text block style. It doesn't, it's not based on anything else. Target type text block, and then here it sets the font family, font weight, font size, text trimming, wrapping, line stacking strategy, text line bounds, everything. And you can see that there are a number of, of these attributes that we saw just a moment ago in the properties window that are all based on that, um, that base text block style, all right? So we can actually utilize based on in our own styles, again, to give us that cascading style sheet approach to styling the app. Okay, so just to recap, the big takeaway from this lesson was the ways in which you can utilize themed resources in your apps to achieve styling that's consistent with other apps on the user's desktop or on their device, all right? I think it's time for a review. See you in the next lesson where we'll add to our little cheat sheet. Thanks.